Inside this box, I've got a somewhat collaborative boot that I've done with Jim Green's. It's not a full collaboration because if this launch goes well, Jim Green wants to run this on their main site and have it as an offering moving forward. If it goes well, no guarantees by any means. And, you know, I didn't really change a whole lot of the upper. Most of the collaborative bits are the internal components. So this would be more of like a design collab, I would say, or collab, and or like a consultation collaboration. It's a better ring to it, consultation collaboration. Um, but it's still, I still had a lot of my hands in the design, a lot of fingers in the pie, whatever, whatever the expression is. Um, because if you don't know who Jim Green is, they're a South African boot company that's just recently in the last like four or five years, got maybe even three or four years, gotten into the US market. I've been working with Jim Green basically ever since. Basically since their first batch of boots hit the American shore, we've been doing reviews of them and, and working with these guys and they've been really successful because of the value that they bring for the, the dollar. Cause if you don't know what the value equation is, I'll put it here. It's basically how much you get per dollar spent and Jim Green due to the fact that they're made in South Africa, the exchange rate um, and all these other factors that you end up with a really high quality boot for a, a really good price. And, and we've done like three or four videos with them. And I had never actually met the CEO Gareth in person until this summer, maybe it was last fall or something, where he came out to an, an outdoor show, like a, a trade show called Outdoor Retailer here in Salt Lake City. Flew all the way from South Africa. So we went over there, we said hi, hung out with him at the booth a little bit, went to dinner afterwards and just started generally chatting about uh, everything we've done together and some ideas for boot collaborations I have, which is like my favorite thing to do. I love I love the whole collaboration thing that we do with, with all these brands. And um, we started discussing barefoot shoes because we just finished that barefoot boot and shoe series where it was kind of disappointing, if I'm being honest. You know, there's a lot of, they cost a lot of money for not a lot of substance for a lot of those brands. There's some good brands, you know, Vivo Barefoot's awesome, Limbs is awesome. There's plenty of good brands in there, but that just, uh, there wasn't one boot that did it how I would have liked to have done it. And so me and Gareth of Jim Green were just chatting about that and kind of not even on purpose started designing a, a boot together. And then over the next few months, we just went back and forth, started playing with some concepts. Um, Jim Green started running it down the road and we'd do a call, which would be like 1 a.m. my time, 8 a.m. their time. So I was just like so tired and like done for the day and while, while they're just getting started. So it was like, it was, it's kind of a, a funny call every time I, I have a call with, with Gareth, just because of the time difference. But we started designing this, this boot. There'd be a zero drop wide toe box boot built in the traditional way. So you get all the benefits of a heritage style boot, plus all the benefits of the zero drop barefoot style shoes, but done better. Because the problem with all those like a zero drop barefoot boots is they're so thin and they're so flimsy. I don't want to feel every single stick and twig and rock underneath my foot. I understand there's a need for it and people like that for certain reasons. But for me, I just want a lot of those attributes without the obnoxious aspect of paying a lot of money for not a lot of substance and for bare, like wearing boots, but barely feeling like you're wearing boots. And I wanted to kind of combine the two of them and Jim Green was up for it. I ended up with this box right here that has the final version of it. So let's open this thing up and see what's on the inside. You might notice there's not any packaging or tape around it. That's because I've already opened them. It's kind of how it goes with collaborations. You know, I can't, I can't really do a true unboxing until I know I have the final version. I probably still could have, but it's more fun to do a little mock unboxing. But these are the boots. So pretty clearly based on the African Ranger boots. Very, very similar upper, almost, I think that's the exact same upper actually. And so what I wanna do is compare this new zero drop African Ranger to the regular one to show you what I wanted to change, why I changed certain things and how we ended up with this boot that looks really similar, but is actually very different when it comes to how you wear it and how it feels underfoot. So first, number one, maybe the biggest thing is the outsole. But you'll notice on, on my version, it's a completely different outsole pattern. On the bottom, it's a completely different width. And the biggest aspect of this that makes it that zero drop is that it is the same width all the way across the sole. So what we did is we took the compound from the African Ranger wedge sole and started applying it to this outsole. We ran through eight different versions, different compounds, till we ended up with one that we really liked, which included initially, actually I think I have it here somewhere. So initially it didn't have this, this extra toe 
bumper there, a little extra thickness. And we noticed it was wearing out the toe and the heel a little bit faster because of those lugs. So we added that on there, changed the pattern slightly, made it, you know, play with the different widths and, and densities of those little triangles. And and we did it eight millimeters thick. So uh, pretty decent thickness. It's, it's about the same thickness as the toe bit of the regular African Rangers. And I feel like eight millimeters was a good balance between still being flexible and movable and malleable and still being able to feel some of what's underneath your foot without being so non-existent that it's a, it's uncomfortable to walk around in because you're feeling every single uh, crack in the sidewalk. And one of the coolest things about this outsole is because of the pattern that we chose, it grabs onto mud, but not nearly as much as like a really thick lugged outsole. We made it so the lugs are close enough that you get a lot of wear without wearing out the sole really quick, but they're not so tight that mud really gets stuck in there. It's at this really nice sweet spot. And it's not that mud doesn't get stuck in here, but it is surprisingly easy to get it out. And not that it's the most unique outsole ever, but I did design it and with the help of Jim Green, but the initial concept and everything was, was my idea, which was really fun to be able to design an outsole with the brand. And the durometer, if we throw the tester on there real quick, comes in a 52 Shore A. I think we did a good job with the outsole. I think it balances the durability of a thicker outsole while still being able to feel what's underneath your foot. We balance the squishiness while still being mostly a durable outsole. It's never gonna last nearly as long as a really hard rubber outsole, but it's not gonna wear out really quick. And I think we achieved making a zero drop outsole look really cool. It has that luggy, almost v Vibram V100 look to it. I'm really happy with how the, the outsole turned out. And we also made it super easy to resole and replace because all you have to do is take this to any of your local cobblers that are reputable. They'll peel off this old outsole, slap a new one on there and you're good to go. And that's because of the next layer up, we did a rubber midsole. Because if you didn't know, rubber and leather bonds really well together initially, but once you really start wearing them, the problem is rubber and leather shrink and grow and absorb water at different rates. So especially if you're in water, that leather can shrink, which pulls it away from the outsole, causing delamination. That's why in the majority of these boots, you see at least a tiny slip sole in there. And that's the exact same reason we did it with this, this boot as well, because there's no visible stitching here. And so to make it as strong as of, a, of an adhesion as possible, we wanna do rubber to rubber. And then that rubber slip sole is sewn to the next layers above which is maybe my most favorite layer, because as you know, I love leather and I love leather boots. And Jim Green has, you know, they have, I think maybe one model that has leather in the insole, but the vast majority of them use a material that's similar to fiberboard, but it's a lot more, it's a lot more fibrous and it's a lot hardier. It's, it's more durable. It doesn't delaminate nearly as much. It acts a lot like leather, but it's missing some of the properties of leather, like compressing to the shape of your foot, absorbing your sweat. The leather doesn't smell nearly as bad as synthetics. Um, it looks better. And maybe the number one benefit of leather is it compresses the shape of your foot, giving you that perfect footprint inside of your boot that makes it feel like a well-worn glove sliding in, just takes that, that handprint. It kind of feels like a well-worn baseball mitt. That's how it feels when, you're, when you have a leather boot that has a leather insole. It has, it's just a really unique feeling. And then another thing that we changed was the regular African Rangers have a steel shank in them because these are much more of a work boot. They're supposed to be sturdier. Whereas these boots, part of the idea is to make them flexible, bendable, as natural feeling underfoot as possible. So putting a metal shank in there, I was a little bit worried that it would kind of ruin the whole idea of this boot. So we just had them pull it because most shanks are either used for two reasons, to support the bridge, that gap between the heel and the forefoot caused by a heel, or to give you something to basically stand on if you're gonna be on ladders all day, hitting your shoe on uh, shovels all day, you want something to, to uh, support your arch so you're not wearing out your feet all day. So with this boot, we didn't really need it. And if anything, it benefits from not having a shank because you can do this kind of thing with them. <laughs> see if I can get it to touch, yeah. So that's why we didn't do the shank. And, and we put these through quite a bit of testing, especially on the South African end, uh, Gareth, wore these, these boots quite a bit. And he put them through a really long test, which was him walking through the South African wilderness for three days straight with a 20 kilogram backpack on it, which I don't know what that converts to when, when pounds, but it sounds like a lot. Another change that we did that was really small that most people wouldn't even notice is we removed the toe stiffener that's originally in the African Rangers and just went with no toe stiffeners. And the, the idea behind that was toe stiffeners, you, it makes it a little bit harder for the toe box to shape to the shape of your foot, but it does structure it. It helps it pre prevent from collapsing. But with this boot where I want it as natural as possible and as almost feeling like 
as close to not wearing boots while still wearing boots as possible. I wanted to remove that, which allows the boot to form to your foot faster. It allows the sides to expand out for your toes. The only downside of a non-structured toe box is it can co collapse a lot faster which puts pressure on the top of your toes until that leather gets its memory and is shaped around your toes. So it's a small difference, but I think it's worth noting. And then maybe the, the final thing that we changed for this design was because the regular African Rangers has a little bit of a heel, the last that the shoe is built on, which is that, that hard plastic shoe shape that gives the shoe its shape. If we built it on that last, the toe would be lifted up because we dropped the heel, making the toe spring up, which is not very anatomical and it, it puts pressure on your toes in a weird way. And so they went back to the drawing board for the last and basically took the last that's made Jim Green really popular in the United States on the Razorback and the African Ranger and took that same shape and just kind of flattened the toe out, dropped it down and made it a lot more zero drop while still being able to be worn as a normal boot. And so that allows them to make the boots in the exact same way, the same processes, because it's, like I said, it's still a 360 stitch down construction that sews through the upper, that leather mid leather insole, and then that rubber slip sole, which I guess you could call a midsole. And it's the same way that Jim Green does it with a double layer stitching all the way around, making them, these are probably the easiest boots in the world to resole. They, and I actually, and you could do it at home. And we're working on a video of like how to resole your own boots at home with affordable equipment and tools because some of these boots are just, you could do from home for really cheap. And then the coolest thing about this whole African Ranger boot is the name comes from real African Rangers who protect the wildlife and the environment down in South Africa from poachers and big corporations coming in. There's plenty of, there's a lot to talk about with that. But the cool thing about the African Ranger boot is Jim Green donates one boot for every 10 African Rangers sold. And so they're quite literally making a huge difference in the African Ranger uh, community and protecting the environment and setting these guys up with high quality boots that actually make a difference in their lives. And so it is cool to be able to buy and support a brand that's supporting the people that built the brand. You know, there's a lot of US brands that will claim that kind of BS, but you can just see through it. It's just marketing BS. You know, it's a, a classic thing with American companies where Jim Green is actually making a difference. And then from the rest of the boot up, it's basically the exact same boot as the African Ranger. And that's kind of why I was like, it's, it's like a consultation collaboration because I, you know, I didn't, I didn't have a full uh, freedom to do whatever I wanted. I just was kind of consulting on the, the sole bits. And so ultimately, what is this boot? Why would you want one? Well, it's a good weekend boot. It's a good camping boot. It's a good hot weather boot if you're working in hot weather. And it's, it's really good for easy on and easy off. It's got the speed hooks on it. So if you're in a job that you're always taking your boots off and put them back on, but you need a boot, this is a good option for it. And basically for me, anytime that I wanna wear a pair of boots, but I don't wanna deal with the obnoxious aspects of wearing a boot, I end up throwing these on. Or if I've like worn my feet out from breaking in a pair of boots or my arches hurt or something's going on, I can throw these on and it basically feels like I'm walking around barefoot. It, it's, as, it's as close to feeling like you're not wearing a boot while wearing a boot as I've ever felt. Obviously I helped design it so I'm biased, but, it, but that was the goal of it and I think we achieved it because it is a very unique feeling boot. And it gets rid of some of the, the pain points that a lot of people have with boots like having your toes squished, having a high heel, being really heavy, being really loud and clumpy, being very restrictive of your ankle and your foot and being super hot. It's basically another, maybe another example is it's as close to a sneaker as you can get while still being built like a boot. So that's the, uh, I don't even know what's called. The Rose Anvil version of the African Rangers, the Zero Drop African Rangers, the Barefoot Rangers, African Rangers. I don't even know what we're calling it, if I'm being honest. But now let's figure out how to size this thing because buying these is gonna be a little bit tricky and we'll go over that after the sizing because there's only a limited stock that you can order right now. So you need to figure out your sizing. If you already know your gym green size, this fits like the rest of your gym greens. But just to kind of give you the breakdown of how I feel in them and how I would size them. So number one step is get, figure out your Brownock size. If, we'll put a link in the description to a sizing video from previous collabs that you can learn how to size your, your foot on the Brannock device, which is that, that metal thing you put your foot in at all the shoe stores. You can go to any shoe store, it'll do it for free. But once you have that figured out, then you can use this information to figure out what, which is gonna be best for you. And so I noticed that with these boots, they fit pretty true to my Brannock size. If, if I don't mind having a little bit of touching of the side of my feet. It's not snug necessarily, but my feet, my toes are pretty far up in the boot. You know, I only have like a finger width 
away from the, the tip of the boot. And so I would say go true to size if you want a little bit more snug of a fit. If you want plenty of wiggle room, if you're gonna wear thick socks, if you like having nothing touching your toes, go half a size up from your Branock. And then this is where it gets tricky. So if you want to run an insole in this, because they are hard, they're just a flat sheet of leather. And if you want to run some sort of squish in there, what you need to do is take your Branock size and go half a size up if you want a little bit tighter of a fit or go a full size up if you want plenty of room, if you're gonna wear socks, if you're gonna like, um, if you don't want anything touching your toes. So just to reiterate, I'm a 10 on the Branock. Um, a 10 fits me well, snug, without an insole, 10 and a half, gives me plenty of wiggle room for anything I'd need. If I'm gonna run an insole, I would go a 10 and a half for a more snug fit, or I'd go an 11 for plenty of wiggle room with the insole. So rewatch that over and over if it didn't make any sense to you, because I think I, I got it down, but it's just confusing in general with any of these boot sizing. That's why we do these videos before the launch, so that you have plenty of time to figure it out, because I have a feeling these are gonna go pretty quick, because these, the price of these are only $10 more than the African Rangers. They're gonna retail for $189. And this is due to the extra cost that from the midsole and the leather insole, from the labor it takes to do the leather insole, from the cost to, to make new molds for the outsole, the, the cost of the new lasts. So honestly, a $10 increase is pretty fair. And I'd, I'd be surprised if anyone disagreed with that. But where this gets tricky, and really cool actually is, is Jim Green took a big gamble on this project. They already made 631 pairs of these. They made 392 in the fudge color and 239 in the brown color, which are in stock, ready to go. And as soon as you order them, they'll be to your door within two to six days if you're in the United States because they're stocked here in the United States, which is really unique for most of these collabs. The brands take the pre-order and then they make them after the order's done and it can take six to nine months sometimes where once again, Jim Green took a huge gamble on this project to get them over here so that you guys can have them in hand as soon as possible. So, so if you order quick, there's a good chance that you'll get your size. If you miss out on your size, or you're watching this after the launch and they're all sold out, you can still pre-order them and they should be delivered by Christmas unless something goes catastrophic or something bad happens with production or shortages, but they're targeting a delivery for the pre-order before Christmas. So the initial backs, batch of 600 plus they're in stock, they're ready to ship, they'll get to you two to six days. If they're sold out in your size or the color or whatever you want, just go to the pre-order listing, which I'll have in the description of the cut in half video and probably this video. Get your pre-order in, it should be, the, sh should be to you before Christmas. And when do these actually release? Well, they'll be out this Thursday. So you have a few days to figure out your sizing, get all your ducks in a row, so you know exactly when to order, how you're gonna order. And to, and like all the rest of the collaborations we do, if you want early access by two hours, Make sure you're signed up for the limited edition email list via the link in my description and wherever else you're seeing this because that email list is for only for limited edition products that we make, collaborations, uh, keep you in the loop with the big sales we do throughout the year and anything that's just not our normal marketing and branding that's just the unique projects, that all goes to limited edition email list. So be sure to sign up for that for this collaboration but all the rest of the collaborations that are coming up. And like I said, these boots officially launch at 10 a.m. on Thursday, mountain time. So noon on the east, nine on the west, 10 on mountain time. And so the official pre-order will start at 8 a.m. mountain time if you're on the limited edition email list. And because it's such a unique boot amongst all the other boots like this with a wide toe box, I think they're gonna go pretty quick. So just fair warning, I'm not trying, I swear I'm not trying to hype it up and like make some fake, fake scarcity. I just want you guys to be aware or not be basically not be mad at me if they sell out in like an hour and everyone's like, oh, I didn't know. I thought they were gonna, they might sell out. So that's the full breakdown of all the decisions and what we changed on this African Ranger compared to the regular wedge heeled African Ranger. And um, thank you guys for supporting these. I love doing collaborations. They're so fun. I get to work with these brands. I get to design boots that no one's ever done before. I get to help brands try new stuff and bring you guys the boots that nobody else is making that we all want. So thank you guys for supporting all these collaborations we do. It's probably my favorite part of, of this whole channel. And uh, don't forget to sign up for the limited edition email list. They drop on Thursday, all the other stuff that we've gone over. If there's any information that I forgot to add, I will put it on this side so you have plenty of time to read all this if there's even anything there. Thank you guys. See ya. <laughs>